Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Facebook 101, what to post and how. Before we get started, I'm going to take a minute, run through some tips that'll make this session run smoothly, help you get the most out of your time you're spending with us today. I am Jean Smith. I am the training coordinator for the University of Houston Victoria Small Business Development Center. While I run through these things, please use the question box to introduce yourself. Just put in your first name and the type of business that you're in. We will be sharing your email with Crystal and Kyle. If um, you do not want that shared, please let me know. You all have an email from me and uh, you can easily email me. So today's webinar is being recorded and everyone who attends today will um, receive a link to that recording. It'll either be later this afternoon or tomorrow. Right now, your mics are muted and your webcams are off. I will be making it now that we've started so that you can open up your mics and ask Crystal or Kyle questions as we go through the presentation. At the top of the screen, you, see, you should see screenshot. That enables you to capture the view that's on the screen. You can click it, the image gets saved to your desktop. And um, that way you can capture what's happening on the screen and it really makes it easy for you. A lot of people do like that feature. The University of Houston Victoria Small Business Development Center is a business advising and training center that serves 11 counties here in South Texas. We are part of the Southwest border, SBDC network and a resource partner for the Small Business Administration. We are funded in part through the SBA and the state of Texas. All our programs are non-discriminatory and they are available to all. We offer confidential, one-on-one, -on -one, no-cost professional business advising services to small business entrepreneurs and business owners throughout South Texas. We can assist those entrepreneurs and owners with anything that throughout the various stages of the business life cycle. I will note business advisors do not provide legal or tax advice, and we are not the SBA. To protect the health and safety of our clients and employees, we do provide our services virtually. We conduct our sessions via phone, email, Zoom, or Skype, or other digital platform. I have put some information in the chat box so that you folks can see um, how to contact us. You can also see how to see our scheduled webinars. Of course, for attending today, you will receive a free complimentary copy of our newsletter. It's electronic. There's no obligation. If it doesn't meet your needs, you certainly can unsubscribe. At the end of today's webinar, a pop-up window will appear with a survey link. We ask that you complete that. Tell us how we did. And your opinion helps our training program meet your needs. Today, joining us are Krista Lindsay and Kyle Motaw. They are from the Victoria Advocate and M. Rogers Media. Crystal is a digital marketing consultant, public speaker, author, former college professor, and entrepreneur. She helps people grow in their businesses via digital marketing. She presents top marketing tips for busy marketing professionals and entrepreneurs for M. Roberts Digital through the Victoria Advocate. She is committed to giving you her best tips and tricks on how to use digital media for an incredible ROI. Kyle is a Victoria native, outdoorsman and dynamic presenter and is the digital marketing assistant for M. Roberts Digital at the Victoria Advocate. He is passionate about understanding and listening to your needs to help you grow your business. As we go along, you can put questions in the question box, which you can access there with the question marks. Um, and I will also make it so you can unmute your mic and jump in and ask a question. Again, we want to thank everybody for uh, making time to be here today, and I'm going to turn it over to Kyle and Crystal. Hey, y'all. What's up? Crystal Lindsay here. What an introduction, and I am so glad you're here. I want to know, are you uh, a little uncertain on how to get seen on social? Are you struggling to be able to break through the noise? Are you uncertain what you need to do to take the first step? Are you getting conflicting information and you don't know what to prioritize? Look, maybe you can't even get off first base. Maybe you don't even know how to post. Maybe you don't know the difference of a page and a profile. Maybe you're already posting and you want to take it to the next level. You're in the right place. That's what today's about.
go ahead and comment in the chat uh, if you have a specific thing you want to get out of today. I want to know, are you struggling with one thing in particular? This is the beginning of a four-part series that Kyle and I are going to be teaching, uh, second and fourth Thursday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, so make sure you mark your calendars. This is just kicking it off, uh, but let me know if you have specific uh, things you want to get out of today, and we'll make sure to integrate that into today's training. So Kyle, are you excited to be here today? Oh yeah, I'm so excited. We are gonna help businesses grow and thrive in 2021. I mean, Crystal, a lot of people are uncomfortable on Facebook and we wanna make them feel comfortable so they can thrive off the social media that is just growing during this pandemic. I mean, a lot of people are on Facebook right now and we wanna give them the great tips and we're gonna show you how to be comfortable. Yeah, you know, I, I, you know I love my statistics here, okay? So before COVID even, one in five minutes on the internet is spent on Facebook. So really let that sink in. If you're wondering, do I need to be on Facebook? Is this an important step? Yes, being on Facebook allows you to get in front of a huge group of people. So hopefully you already know that, that's why you're here. But what you may not know is because of COVID, social media use has spiked over 200% on some days. So you wanna make sure that you're leveraging Facebook effectively to get in front of that audience. And that's why uh, we put together this webinar to get you comfortable uh, with what to post and how. Uh, again, 201 is coming, so stay tuned for that. It's gonna be social media hacks and then 201. But let's jump into this. If you wanna get seen on social media and grow your business, you need to know how how to create authentic shareable content. Now, Kyle, one of the things that I see people struggle with consistently is they post about what they care about as an entrepreneur, the products they want to push, the services they want to sell, you know, what is important to them, but what they're not posting is what's important to your ideal client. So I'm so glad you're here to put together and share these easy ways to leverage Facebook so these people can get seen on social media and grow their business. Uh, walk them through the three main things we're gonna teach today. Absolutely, so we are definitely gonna talk about the difference between a Facebook personal page and your business page and understanding that difference and how you use the business page to leverage your business. And like Crystal's saying, solve the problems that your clients are seeing and how you're, yes how your product or service is there to help their need. Absolutely, and then we're bringing it to types of post. Uh, again, what to post, like should you be posting a video or an image or a link or a, you know, a story or a boosted post or an ad or a, we're gonna break that down for you and then finish with best practices. Is that exciting or what, right? You're gonna get so much out of today and really take this to the next level. So let's jump into this. Uh, profile versus pages. Mm. Now, this we need to start with because we need to clarify some language here. If you are an entrepreneur or Facebook marketer, chances are you have a business page, right? Some real estate agents out there just have a profile and that is your individual profile. So there's a big difference between profile versus pages. And I want to make sure we clarify that language so that all of these trainings make sense. Um, so Kyle, walk us through, you know, what are a couple of the differences about a page and a profile? Well, definitely every, every page is connected to that profile. And so you're able to link back and forth from your business page to your personal profile. But you know what's cool on, on the business page, Crystal, is you can boost a post. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly where we're going, right? So being on a business page, means that you're in the driver's seat okay so if you are posting on a business page again not your personal profile that's you know has your friends and family on it but you then created a page and put it as your business page when you post on that business page that means that you can put a couple bucks behind your post and be in control of who sees that post. You can boost to people who've liked your page. You can boost to people who are in your exact audience, people who've emailed you, you have their emails or LinkedIn contacts very easily, um, or you can boost to people with certain interests, um, you know, people who are married or not married with this income level in that zip code and create a saved audience. Uh, so the big benefit of being on a page versus a profile is you're in the driver's seat. 
Um, but let's clarify a little bit more too. Uh, so the other thing, you know, when you're working with a marketer like myself and we say, okay, we want to help you with your business page, go ahead and get, make me an admin. Now, what that means is you don't have to give someone the login to your profile. So if you are on your social media profile, again, individual profile, business page. If you're on your profile, the only way somebody else can access your profile is if you give them the login, which gives them access to everything. But if you go ahead and you have a business page, then you make someone an admin. Why, why is that helpful, Kyle? Absolutely. So when you make someone an admin, they are able to make changes as well to your page and, and really make the changes that you want to see to put in front of those needs of the people who, who need your service or product. Exactly, exactly. They can be an editor uh, where they can post on your page or they can be an admin, which means they can make other people admins on your page as well. Um, so we've already talked about the fact you can pay to get seen on that page. That means you can boost a post or run a Facebook ad. But what you really need to know is that your Facebook page actually is indexed by Google. What does that mean, Kyle? Why, why is it important for a page to be indexed by Google? Absolutely. So this goes back to the SEO, the search engine optimization. And in Google, Crystal, what's the number one search engine in the, in the world right now? Google. Absolutely. So whenever you post things on Facebook using keywords of your business, of your product or service, this gets also indexed into the number one search engine in the world, which is Google. And so this makes you worthy in Google's world. And so... so good. It, it just makes it definitely worthy and your business is getting shown more often. Yeah, absolutely. The And so the sweet spot when you ask me how often should you post uh, is going to be twice a week. Google likes to see two social signals, which means they like to see two posts, which trigger them to index two social signals a week. So if you can post twice a week on your Facebook page, that's going to help your SEO. That means the words that you post on Facebook page will help you get recommended by Google when people are searching online. Hopefully that makes some sense. Um, but I've got a big one here. So the last one I want to really emphasize folks, listen up loud and clear here. Uh, if you are posting on your Facebook profile, not your page, but your profile, individual profile, and you're going business, 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 you post about what services, buy now, half off, click here, Facebook can and will shut you down and take all of your friends, all of your images, everything you hold near and dear on Facebook. So on a business page, you're paying to promote. So that obviously is in Facebook's best interest. Uh, but on your profile, you're not paying, so you're not supposed to promote. Now, you could you could share a business post, you know, you can, you know, talk a little bit about your services. I know my real estate agents love that, um, but you do not want to be business, business, business on your personal profile. They will shut you down. So please know that. So the reason why you want to be part of a, fa have a Facebook page, number one is that they're not going to shut you down. Number two is you are in the driver's seat and you can pay to get seen. And number three is it's going to make you an, uh, in, it's going to help your SEO so that you get recommended by Google more. And number four, it's going to give you more privacy. You're not going to get someone log into your profile. All right. Does that make a sense, y'all? I had to get that out of the way. I know we're starting at ground zero here, but you need to understand the difference of a business profile and page. If you don't have a page, just Google how to set up a Facebook page and go ahead and get that taken care of. You have a cover photo, a profile, just like you do on your personal profile but you can boost posts to get seen. All right, Kyle, anything before we move forward on that? It sounds great. I mean, definitely understanding the difference between the, the profile and the, and the business page. So you have that right. appropriate business page so you don't get shut down. Awesome, awesome. Gene, any questions on that in the chat? Not as of yet, but All like right, I then. said, people can unmute themselves. If you have trouble with that, just raise your hand and I'll make sure you can unmute and feel free to jump in here and ask your questions. This is a great opportunity. Yes, indeed. Thank you for that. So I would just want to emphasize, emphasize, emphasize that we are here to be interactive and support you. So push us to get a nugget. If you're like, look, I kind of understand it, but I need this one more thing. Let us know. 
unmute un un yourself and chime in. Uh, if it, chances are somebody else is asking that same question. All right, so next thing we're talking about is mobile versus desktop, okay? So how do you get to your page on mobile versus desktop? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you right now on desktop, okay? So when you first log in, here you are on Facebook, it says pages right here on the left. From there, you can go ahead and click through on your pages. It's that simple. So again, just click on pages on the left and you got to your page. On your desk or on your, um, your mobile, when you go ahead and you go to right here and you download the Facebook app, you have pages or Facebook, either will work. I'm gonna show you through Facebook to keep it simple. And you come in and it says just your general screen. When you first log in, notice there are three bars right here at the bottom. Click those three bars. And then it says your pages and you just click on that. So there are, it's pretty straightforward on either format to get to it, but there's one secret uh, um, tactic that you unlock when you use mobile Facebook. Kyle, do you want to tell them or you want me to? I'll go for it. So it's absolutely the the last frontier that's that's you don't have to pay for. And it's the stories, the ones you see at the very top, mm -hmm. a, a roll of your friends or family or other business pages who have who have shared their stories. And it could be a video, it can be photos, however it is. But this is another way to engage with your audience. Yes, indeed. So if you are a personal profile, yes, you can post a story uh, and it's very easy. But if you are a business page, you have to go to your mobile to upload a story. I can't emphasize that enough. I, how many people contact me and say, but how do I do it on a desktop? You cannot do it on a desktop. So just make sure you upload your, uh, your get, get the app so you can download it on your app itself. Now, if you want to post on your Facebook mobile here, it's very easy. Once you log into your page, you see right here where it says publish, you just simply click on publish and it opens it up. Now, pro tip here is talk text. Hey y'all, we're about to go live to talk about Facebook marketing. Check it out. All right, so make sure that's a pro tip that you use talk text. Now, the other thing I wanna show you is when you go to post and you see these icons, click here at the bottom. This is where you start accessing and unlocking features like how to check in on at a local event. Uh, you also can leverage your camera and upload some photos. You can give a COVID-19 update, but this is the exciting one, live video. So again, we're gonna come back to the type of post, but I wanna show you how to unlock this right now. Now, uh, that is my piece of artwork that's in front of my desk, but you can see that you can easily go live right from there. You simply hit start live video. So again, I just wanted to show you a couple of little updates, it's very easy. Same thing when you go to your desktop, simply hit publish, and then you can go and post, post right from there. So again, I'm starting at the bare minimum here. Let's talk about something a little higher level, which is Facebook groups, all right? So Facebook groups. Kyle, have you been in a Facebook group before? I have been in a Facebook group. And it's, it's, <laughs> and it's definitely pretty cool because a lot of people are there for the same purpose. And they're asking questions that are, you know, that need to be answered that you maybe wanted to ask. And hopefully there's an expert in the group that will answer these questions, right, Crystal? Well, that's exactly it. So this is a free way to demonstrate your authority. Um, if you're a business owner, you can do this as an individual as well. But join Facebook groups, go in and comment and share your content from your page. Now, think about it like this. Again, this whole idea is reverse engineer who is the person you want to get in front of. So if you are out there and you're a pharmacy, let's say, and you wanna get in front of people who are young moms or Medicare patients, then you need to think creatively about what groups do I have on Facebook, in, in this case, Victoria, Texas, that would reach young moms or Medicare clients. Now, I wanna be clear because guess what? You're, you may or may not find a group that reaches both of them. You're probably gonna have a different group for the Medicare clients versus the young moms. 
but think critically about who's your ideal client and what groups are they hanging out in. You're gonna see that this is a key way to demonstrate your expertise. You can not only post content that has tips and ideas and advice, but you can comment on other people's posts and be able to provide that expertise. Um, but again, this is a great way to increase your audience. Maybe you don't have many people who like your page yet. Um, this is how you start to be able to create that authority and increase your audience. Uh, you will provide solutions. Uh, and most of this is all free, right? The bottom line is this is a free way that makes you the authority on your topic. Um, so just search for your topics on Facebook and ask to join. Sometimes you have to answer three questions. Uh, you see a little button down here like I have, join group, uh, but engage and provide solutions. I cannot emphasize enough that you do not, you are not supposed to log into a Facebook group and post buy now, buy now, buy now, buy now, half off, buy now. People will tune you out. What you need to do is post in there and like, like, and comment. You need to post in there and celebrate other people's work. You need to post in there and comment and become a resource at least twice. Come on, folks. And then you put your own content in there. So this is not an immediate lead source, but it is a long-term game that is absolutely free and allows you to become the authority uh, and hey kudos to you if you want to create your own Facebook group so uh, creating your own Facebook group allows you to become the authority and again it's another free way to be uh, put in the driver's seat and get your content out there uh, chances are you're putting something on your page so why not repurpose that to a Facebook group uh, with key people who are your target audience anything you want to add to that Kyle yeah that's so good and you can become the go-to resource for your product or service and really engage your audience. Exactly, 100%. Now, okay, so when you- now Let me jump in here. I do yes. have a question for you before you- Yes. A question. Um, why would you post a story instead of a regular Facebook post? And what are the advantage for a business page to do that? Perfect, okay. So if you, the question is why a story versus a regular post? So if you are posting on Facebook, thank you, I, I neglected to mention this. This is a key, key component. If you are posting on Facebook, only 1% of the people who like your page will see your post. Let that sink in. So let's say you have 2,000 people who like your page. 20 people are going to see that post. So if you don't put money behind it, OK, so if you're telling me that, you know, you like to get a good deal, you're not going to spend any money on marketing, maybe business isn't going that well, you're hurting because of COVID, whatever it is, you're in startup mode, you don't have a Facebook budget, then putting a post on Facebook is essentially creating a brochure that nobody is going to find. Right. So you need to do something to get your content out there. So putting it on your story at least gets it out there so that the people who like your page will see it in their updates and their stories. So it's an unpaid way to be able to promote your page. Um, I hope that please clarify if that you still have a remaining question on that and we'll go back to the Facebook page versus profile. Anything you want to add to that, though, about why a story, Kyle? And absolutely, and another great thing too is the stories are at the top of the, when you open up Facebook. And so it's at the top of the mind awareness that they'll see your business or something pop, a picture, a video, or however it is, and they're more likely to engage in it on a story. Yes, indeed. Again, I can't emphasize enough. When you first log in, this is, this is my screen right now. And right here, these are the, the first things I see are my friends' stories. So again, having a story up here is going to create that top of mind awareness. Um, you'll see, start watching people's stories, by the way. Some people are using, you know, 15 second videos, but they put six back to back that tell a whole sales campaign. Some of them are using a little animated GIF. Some of them are using a single photo. You know, I, I'll post a sunrise when I walk in, I do my sunrise walks. You know, whatever it is, you can have a snapshot of your family. You could do anything you would post on your page is going to be a great thing for a story. And we're getting into the textable standard. So what you should post uh, is coming up, but I just wanna point out, you could do video, image, GIF, anything on the stories. Um, and then just to really reinforce why you would post on a business page over a profile, because this is the key component of this first part of the training. I want you to understand the reason why you post on a page instead of a profile is because you have marketing dollars to spend. 
okay? If you don't have marketing dollars to spend, then you should definitely post on your profile because chances are you're gonna get your friends and family to come out and like and comment on that post, right? So if you, you have no dollars, Facebook profile is gonna give you some free exposure, but if you abuse it and you do it too much and it's all business, they will shut you down. So hopefully that helps clarify it. Please let me know if there's still a remaining question on that. Uh, Kyle, anything you wanna to add to page versus profile? Oh, that's, that's really great. All right, awesome. Hit yeah. them with the textable standard. Oh, go we for it. Have, we do have one more question. And Please. this is, um, for um, a small business, it sounds like a full-time effort. Is it better to hire a marketing specialist or do it yourself? Really good question. Um, you know, as a person who is an entrepreneur, I can tell you right now, my marketing, even as a social media firm I had for, for almost seven years, um, it, even as a marketing professional, my marketing got pushed to the back burner. So I can tell you, you know, I posted regularly, I did my webinars, I, you know, did all of that, but it was so hard uh, because clients need stuff and you're focusing on sales and then it's a, now it's a tax season and, you know, it's always something, right? So if you are at bandwidth and you are, you know that about yourself, you do not have an extra, you know, um, three hours a week to spare for this, then hire a professional. Um, realistically, I know our services start at 300 a month to manage a, a, a social media channel. So it, it's not a lot of money to be able to have somebody manage your channel. Um, but I would just say, get make, don't stop and just not do it. You know, if you're not going to do it, hire somebody. If you can commit, you know, 20 minutes a day for three days a week even, uh, and put that on your calendar and make it work, then make it work. You need two posts a week. That's really the, the holy grail. Um, so just make sure it happens. And if you can't do it, then please do hire somebody uh, to make sure you elevate your business. Um, one of the things I want to emphasize here uh, is that when people get introduced to you, uh, your business, right? So let's say, you know, let's say you have a mechanics uh, shop, right? For oil changes. And, you know, you say, hey, you know, Kyle, you know, I was, I'm unhappy with my place. Where do you get your oil change done? And he says, hey, I go to, they're not my client. I'm going to plug Slicks, okay? They, you know, I, I go to Slicks and I, and I go, oh yeah, is it a good experience? And he goes, oh yeah, it's great. You should go check them out. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Am I going to drive my car in there and go get an oil change or am I going to Google them? Probably Google, Google yeah. them, right? When I Google them, what pops up, Kyle? You know, hopefully it's their business right there at the top. So you can definitely search their website. It, their website. And what's the second thing that shows up? It's going to be there. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be Facebook. And so if I go to Slick's Facebook page, and I honestly I haven't been there in a while, but I imagine they have a following. If I go there and they got zero people like their page, they haven't posted in, in a year, you know, they don't have any likes on their post. All of a sudden that trust that was built up because Kyle recommended them is now about zero because their page isn't fresh. So it broke down that implicit trust. So the two posts a week is not only going to help Google get you indexed and recommend on Google, but it's going to build up that social clout right so i can't emphasize enough how important that is um, make sure you keep your facebook up to date don't just not let it happen all right any other questions because we're going to hit them with the textable standard nope i think we're ready to move on all right textable standard this is my favorite kyle hit them with the textable standard yes absolutely so whenever you know textable standard if i have my phone and i'm going to text crystal something would this be spam or would it be valuable of course it'd be valuable. I wouldn't want to text crystal spam. And so it's definitely the same thing when you think about when we post on Facebook. Valuable mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So think about it like this. When people ask me, you know, I have my social media firm, the number one thing people ask me is how do I, I get leads from Facebook? And I say, well, you know, what are you doing to get leads outside of Facebook? Like amplify that effort on Facebook, you know? Um, you know, do you have a special? Do you have a product? Are you focused on this thing? Whatever it is. The number two question I got is, well, what should I post then? And my answer is, who's your ideal client and what do they care about? And, and I can't tell you how often people just looked at me confused. What do you mean who's my ideal client and what do they care about? I'm asking what I should post on social. So 
the thing is people post on social as a, as an entrepreneur and marketer, you post on social, what you care about, the products you want to push, the sales you're having, the things you want people to click on. Rarely do entrepreneurs and marketers stop and think, look, if I, if I had my ideal client, Sally, and I said, you know, I'm going to text this deal to Sally. And would this be spam or would this be valuable? That is the moment. If you get nothing else out of this workshop, I want you to stop before you post on Facebook and ask yourself, is this spam or is this a resource? If it is not valuable, do not post it on Facebook. So if you would text that, whatever that graphic is, let's say it's you eating your lunch. I can't tell you, real estate agents, they say, well, what about my lunch? And I see people posting their lunch. Should I post my lunch on Facebook? I can't tell you, I get that question so often. Okay, look, if your ideal client cares about your lunch, then chances are, yes, you should post it on Facebook. For instance, if you're a health coach, if you're running a gym, if you are a real estate agent who specializes in healthy living, right? Whatever, if that is your brand, then put it on Facebook because your clients would care about it. If you would text them your lunch and they would find that interesting and write back, hmm, that's interesting. Did you get your dressing on the side? I don't know. If they're going to text you something back about your lunch and, and find that valuable, put it on your Facebook. And if they would just text you and say like, what are you doing? Did you mean to send this to somebody else? Don't put it on Facebook. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if it would be valuable, post it. If it would be spam, don't post it. Uh, the second standard for Facebook is if you post it, boost it. Look, I already gave you the statistic that 1% of the people who are on your page are going to actually see your post. Really let that sink in. So real estate agents, I love y'all, but you are notorious for just paying somebody, you know, 50 bucks a month, whatever it is. I don't know, some cheap process that just puts posts on your page, right? Can content. And then you say, you know, but I don't know if it's really working. Not only is it not working and getting you leads, it is hurting your relevancy score. So when you do have something hot, like a great listing you want to promote and you put a couple of bucks behind it, you get like two likes. But if you went and every single time you boosted your post for even a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, I'm not talking about a lot of money here. But if you boost it, then the cost of marketing goes down per post because Facebook trusts you. Think about it like this. If the Kardashians put $5 behind a post, they get like 5 million likes, right? If the Joe Schmo's coffee shop down the street who just opened put $5 behind a post, they get five likes, right? They get 5 million views for Kardashians, they get 500 views for the coffee shop. Same amount of money, but Facebook knows people are gonna pay attention to Kardashians. And so they went ahead and gave them more for their money. So if you are posting on Facebook and hear this loud and clear, if you're posting on Facebook and you are not boosting it, you are raising your cost of marketing per post. You are making it harder to dig yourself out of the hole moving forward. Stop posting on your Facebook and not boosting it. If it, you took the time to create the post and put it on your Facebook, then take the time to boost it. And if you're posting from Instagram and you're pushing through, you can still boost that post uh, from Facebook. So I can't emphasize enough. Those are the two things I want you to get. Think about it before you post it. Is it spam? And two, boost it when you post it. And what do you think? Anything you want to add, Kyle? Yeah, that's so good. And I also want to add as well, you know, posting valuable content. You know, think about the problems that your clients are having, your yeah. customers. Think about the problems that yeah. may arise in the future. Be proactive. and throw out valuable content that's going to be be there to support them before those questions even arise. Yes, that is so good. If you can figure out what your client cares about, what are their needs, their goals, their challenges, their objections, their obstacles, and then create content like an FAQ to overcome that, you are going to get leads from Facebook because you're overcoming the objections that are keeping them from the sale. So good, Kyle. Thank you. All right. So let's go ahead and step into types of posts here. So First of all, there's there's GIFs, there's photos, there's articles, there's videos, uh, and then there's even live videos, a component of video. Um, Kyle, what what do you think of when you think of types of posts? Yeah, definitely. There's so many different options that you could really you know put on Facebook, and you know what's better? Is it a still photo? Is it a video? A live video? People love watching videos, right, Crystal? Man, I'm telling you, people are sitting at home, and this is a COVID statistic, okay? People are sitting at home, 
and not reaching out as a potential client until they watch a video. And the number is 86%. 86% of people are watching videos to determine who they're going to work with and then they reach out as a potential client. I just talked to a car dealership who I stated that statistic to and he said, oh my gosh, I know. Not only have, are they already, they decided the type of car they want, they know the model, they know all the features when they walk in here, now they're just shopping who they want to sell them the car. Right. And so this is true for all industries, though. So the name of the game is if you're not creating video content that answers objections or concerns that shows the unboxing of your 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 product or that gives that experience and walks them through that buying cycle and why they should buy, then chances are they're going to go to your competitor. Right. So I can't emphasize enough how powerful video is. Um, so I would recommend video and specifically live video. Uh, now, you know, with M. Roberts Digital, we can promote and create incredibly produced videos um, for pretty affordable compared to our competitors, you know, $700, $600, $500, you know, whatever it is, we can do a really great little whiteboard video or shoot a video and edit it and your logo spins in and spins out your names on the screen and it's super professional it's jump cut because you messed up and, but you can't tell. We can do all of that, but I'm going to tell you right now, you don't need that. What you need to do nine times out of 10 is you need to go to your phone. You need to open up your camera. Look at that. And then you need to click on video and then go ahead and hit that little button. And look, here we are recording right here, right? If you're going to create videos like this and you spin it around and you go, oh, look, and now here we are, we're shooting and we're live and we're doing a webinar. This is so much fun. And you post that on Facebook you're going to get way more likes and engagement and reach way more people than if you did a pre-recorded video and had paid six, seven hundred dollars for it. Cal, what do you think about that? A, a free video on your phone outperforms a six hundred dollar video. And Crystal, you're right. And people like that human interaction and you no know, mistake here and there. That's just that's just the way it is. And so people love seeing that. And also, Crystal, I want to add the first couple seconds of a video, do something popping. You know, make yes. people, people are scrolling through their feed. And if you do something right at the beginning to get them to stop and watch the video for 15 yes. seconds, it's going to make the well, audience engaged. I mean, print out a sign. Look, here's my little shameless plug, my little book I wrote, right? So have something like your book, your logo, a coffee cup with your logo, and come in and do this even, right? Or be like this. And then like you do something super cute in those first couple seconds to create movement. Think about how you're going to create movement. So I'm gonna encourage you to prioritize video and create movement in there. I want you to also use live video. So live video outperforms pre-recorded video six to one. Now, when I say outperforms, this is getting to a key component we need to emphasize if you're learning on how to get seen on social. What's the number one rule that gets you seen on social, Kyle? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely definitely valuable content. It's content, absolutely, that gets comments. That is the name of the game. If you get comments, you get seen, right? So if you know the name of the game is to get comments and live video outperforms pre-recorded video for comments six to one, then what are you gonna do to be able to drive live video? Do something fun, create a pop, it's free, and then put boost it for five, 10 bucks behind it. Now we're gonna talk about boosting later on in the next one, but you know what I mean. So hopefully that's ringing true to somebody. Um, anything with animals also gets killer uh, engagement. So if you have a puppy dog, yes, I know. Isn't it so funny? Is somebody go out there going, is she really saying animals? Did she say a puppy dog? Look, if you got a goat, get a goat, okay? I'm telling you, if you're in a video with a goat, you'll get a ton of comments. I don't, you got chickens, get a chicken. You got a horse, get a horse. I mean, look, we're in Victoria, Texas. It, it is an agricultural me mecca out here. So get your animals. I love my dogs. Some people love cats. You do you and get your animal and get them in the shot or hold a photo of them. Whatever it is, you're going to see a tremendous engagement. So if you have, a, if you're doing a photo, get an animal in it, right? If you're doing video, create movement. If you're doing live video specifically, create movement and boost it. Uh, and then gifts are always fun. So you can put gifts in the comments, you can put gifts as a post. Uh, and lastly is articles. Now this one, I actually had to learn the hard way in my role uh, with my social media firm. Did you know that if you post an article onto Facebook, you're actually penalized? 
because you're taking people off of Facebook. And if you're Mark Zuckerberg, your number one name of the game is get people to buy advertising and stay on Facebook. Is it not, right? So if you're using an article that takes them off of Facebook, do you think Mark likes that? No, no, he does not. So uh, you can use articles, but use it sparingly and make sure it's intentional, but it should be a last resort compared to graph, uh, uh, um, posts and gifts and videos and such. Also, keep in mind, you know, in terms of uh, type of content here and what you're posting, that you're usually sandwiched between um, a quinceanera and a graduation, a baby photo and someone's grandparents. So you don't want it to be a, like a buy now. You want it to look more homegrown and organic and human. So put your face on it whenever possible. Hopefully that helps. Any questions on that? We're going to talk a little bit about paid versus uh, unpaid before we jump into that. No, we don't have we don't have any questions uh, right now. Just remind everybody, you know, jump in, unmute yourself or put them in the question box. What were we gonna say, Kyle? I wanna go ahead and emphasize comments again, Crystal, and how important yes. this is. Because whenever you post something, put a comment in, in, the, in the text of it or put a question in the text of it, get people to comment below because those comments show up on that person's feed. And so it just yeah. engages their friends and family. 100%, and when they comment on your post, it's like they shared your post because it shows up in their newsfeed and it says, Kyle Motal commented on Crystal Lindsay's post. And then they, somebody else in their, their friends and family goes, who's this Crystal Lindsay? I should go check her out. What's Kyle commenting on, right? So make sure you drive comments. Comments are what gets you seen on Facebook, so good. So the, we talked a little bit about stories versus updates. Again, an update is a post. That's where you hit publish on your page and you publish something, just like you publish on your profile. Um, this is where, again, 1% of people are going to see on your page if you do not boost it. So you need to pay for it. Uh, it's very easy to do it. You go to your page, you enter the text and write a post section. And when you're finished, you hit post, okay? Uh, that is very easy. This one for your stories, again, you want to access your Facebook page from the Facebook mobile app. Scroll down till you see add a story, click on add a story, create a story or upload a photo, and then click add a story button. Now it's worth noting stories go away after 24 hours. So this is something you have to update. Um, and these are not indexed into Google. These are indexed into Google. These are where you have to put a couple bucks behind it. This is free. Um, when you, and also when we talk about putting a couple bucks behind it, a dollar a day is the minimum boost on Facebook. So if you're out there and you don't have much budget uh, for Facebook, I'm gonna encourage you to do a dollar a day, even just $1, come on folks, you got a buck, skip a coffee, okay? I mean, seriously, okay, don't skip coffee, make it at home, <laughs> you know, I like that coffee. But, you know, do something, but a dollar a day. So, you know, $15 for a boost, like if you got a big deal, 15, 20 bucks is a lot of money to put behind a post and you can run that for about five days. I would recommend running it over the weekend from Thursday to Monday, because we know there's a spike in social on the weekend. So at least do a dollar a day, $5 a post would be a really good goal to hit. Do a $5 boost even, or a five day boost for $5, um, or run it for 15 for five days if you got a big important post you wanna get out there. Anything you wanna to add to that, Kyle? Yeah. Absolutely, and like Crystal said earlier, if you took the time to create the valuable content on the post, take yeah. the time to put money behind it and get it seen. So good, thank you for that. I can't emphasize that enough. Remember, if it, is this spam? <laughs> and and if I and if I posted it, I need to boost it. Those are the two standards to get seen on Facebook. And the third standard is get comments to get seen. What can I do to get comments? All right, folks. So here it is. So now you've got a piece of content, and you um, post it on your Facebook. You did a video or a live video. You had a graphic, whatever it is. Now it's time to repurpose, repurpose, repurpose. So you want to be able to splinter that content. Uh, so we talk about starting with a top performing post or FAQ based on the client's objections, concerns, obstacles, whatever, make a video ideally, and then take that video and you can upload it to SpeechPad. Now, um, if you can, I don't know, I think if I comment, it goes to organizers only, but I put it on the screen right here, SpeechPad, spelled like it sound, .com. 
and you get a transcript for a dollar a minute. So if your video is five minutes long, you can pay $5 and get a transcript of that. And they're really good on doing grammar and spelling. So highly recommended. Then you take that transcript, turn it into smaller posts. You can turn it into a blog on your website or LinkedIn and then repurpose to the other channels you're on because what is old is new again. So I can't emphasize enough when you're asking me, what should I post on social? Um, my question is, what's, what's already important to your business? What are you already talking about? You don't have to become a magician and come up with something fresh and be witty on the fly every day. I know that's what stops most people. Instead, think about what's already important. What are you already talking about? How can you repurpose it? Look at what's your top performing post last month and figure out how to make it fresh again and make it new again. What do you think, Kyle? Definitely, and really emphasizing your products and service that people are loving and that people are enjoying mm -hmm. and how you are being the guide for them to mm -hmm. solve those problems they're having. So good. And, and you really um, bring up the idea of case studies and testimonials. So if you wanna know like, what is the marketing gold? What is the one thing, if I had it right now and I had a magic wand, what should you put on Facebook? You should absolutely have a video where you, just a little Facebook video, Not you don't have to pay me and my, Kyle to come out and shoot it for you, although we will, you know, you just go right like this and put your phone and they say, wow, you know, Kyle, you are amazing to work with. You have made this process so easy. You've helped me grow my business. I've gotten all this business from you. You say, that is so wonderful. Can you repeat that real quick? I would like to be able to include that on this video. Yes. You know, no, seriously, you just say, you ask three questions. This is what you need. This is marketing gold right here. You ask the question, one, what did you struggle with before you met me? Two, how did I make it as easy as one, two, three? And three, how is your life better because you worked with me? If you ask those three questions, you could be off camera or on camera with them, but if you get them to say those three questions to your top clients, you are going to have marketing gold. Put that on your website, put it on social, put it on YouTube, but send it out in an email blast, You know, send it to clients via text when they're ready to sign, but not signing, whatever it is, that is marketing gold. Um, so that is what you want to make sure. And then two, if they post something on like Google reviews and it's a text review, edit, copy, paste it, and you can put it on your Facebook and just say, you know, do the five star emoji and then say what and copy their their words and then put down, wow, you know, thank you so much, Sally, you know, and Victoria, Sally S, you know, and Victoria, I really appreciate your kind words um, and sharing the good news on Google. Uh, if you also are out there struggling with the same thing she was struggling with, then go ahead and reach out, I'd love to help you. So that is another great marketing gold, right? Like you said, is get after the people who are talking about you and celebrating them. Yes, awesome. that's so good. that goes definitely back to the testimonials and really, you know, for example, a car dealership. You know, you just sold a, a car to a family of four and ask them, you know, how did we make the buying process so easy for you? You know, yeah. and have them explain, and this will just do leaps and bounds for your business. Yeah, even if you just ask that, what, how did I make this easy for you? That is the one question I could sum it all up. But I'm gonna tell you right now, the secret sauce is get them to say the struggle and how their life is better, because people find themselves in the story, right? I had one client uh, who was an uh, attorney for Fire and Flood, and he had a case study. We shot some videos on his Facebook, we did a live. And he had this woman come in and, and say that she was so stressed out over this fire and blood damage that she got eczema and she was stressed out as her daughter's wedding and they didn't know how they're going to finance it. And she was just going on and on about losing sleep and her stomach was tied up in knots and she shared all that. They got 15 clients. I mean, this is incredible because this woman poured her heart out about how hard her life was before they met her. And they were all saying, I felt the same way. I'm just losing sleep at night. I've actually started getting eczema. My daughter's wedding's coming up. So don't skip over that. But yeah, if you got to sum it up, just say, how do I make this easy for you? Great point. All right. So last thing here, best practices, and we are landing this plane. So first thing is you want to make sure you are authentic, right? You, uh, People are craving authentic content. Uh, you know, this, this uh, scheduled out content from, you know, Mr. Chief Vendor 123, who just posts articles on your page about current events in your industry. People are tuning that out. And chances are you can tell by how little engagement you're getting on those posts, okay? So just know that they want to hear from you. They want you to humanize your business. And get this, Kyle, actually be social on social media. I know, I know wow. you're shocked. Well, 
Well, okay. hold on. We're supposed to be social on social media. I'm a business. Okay. I'm trying to sell something. Yeah. I know you're trying to sell something, but you need to be authentic and human and comment and show that side of you before people are going to buy. What do you think about that, Kyle? Yeah, absolutely. Creating that authentic, you know, content for your customers and having the, having them share it around is, is definitely a positive. Like I'm telling you, that is absolutely true. Um, so, all right. So next thing is live video. We've talked about live video. Um, I want to really emphasize again, live video outperforms pre-recorded video. You will get 97% uh, of your comments while you're live, especially if you have the phone in selfie mode and you can see yourself in the camera while you're live, you can see the comments as they're coming in or who's joined your broadcast. So I would encourage you to say, you know, all right, we're about to get started. Thank you all so much for joining me. Oh, hey, Sally, you know, hi, John. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, I appreciate that. I'll tell her you said hello. Okay, don't derail the whole thing because know that 97% of your views are going to come in replay. 97% of your comments though, and we know comments get seen, make you get seen. 97% of your comments are going to come when you're live. So milk that, look at who's coming in, look at who's commenting and talk to them like they're sitting in front of you. So I can't emphasize enough, live video, live video, live video. Um, what do you think about live video, Kyle? Yeah, that's a great point, Crystal. I mean, interacting with the people who are watching the live video at that time is the best practice because it just, mm -hmm. you know, it makes that person feel welcome. And the person who's going to watch it later on the replay, they're going to feel welcome to enter your business as well. Oh, so good. So good. And the, the next one is community based. You want to create community based content. So uh, real estate agents, I, I, as you can tell, I'm the real estate point of contact for the Victoria <laughs> Advocate. And I've specialized in real estate uh, for a long time. Uh, but my real estate agents are notorious for wanting to specialize in a certain neighborhood or a certain type of housing or agriculture or commercial or whatever it is. So find the movers and shakers of your industry and interview them. You know, I had a real estate agent and specifically he was struggling with wanting to be known for the go-to for an up and coming neighborhood and a coffee shop opened up. So we went to the coffee shop and interviewed the, the owner and just asked him about it. You know, we're here on behalf of this real estate agent. You know, we're talking to the microphone and we're so excited to have the owner of, you know, coffee shop ABC here. Uh, I just want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, go ahead and drop your comment in. Let me know. Have you been to this coffee shop? Have you tried their scones? Whatever. And then you say, Mr. Business Owner, thank you for being here. Tell us why somebody should come to your coffee shop. Tell, walk us around. Show us the, the whatever. Let us meet the staff. You could do anything. And creating that type of community-based content is so powerful. Um, if you're a nonprofit, you know, and you want to be able to get seen, then showcase the other nonprofits you work with or highlight the businesses that donate or the individuals that donate or the individuals you serve. But showcasing and getting real in the community is such a great way to get authentic and get seen. Because remember, when you get comments, you get seen. So you want to get local businesses, tag them and have them comment with you. Um, what do you think about community-based content, Kyle? Yeah, most definitely. Being out there and involved within the community and, and showing how you're giving back it is is very positive so important all right last one here is contest this one's my favorite look oh my goodness y'all you can run a contest and actually give something away on facebook and see tremendous leaps and bounds i know we've been doing this um, i did this for a jewelry company and for a pair of earrings and we got them 450 leads you know, we just did this for a dealership and we got them over 730 leads, right? We did this for a six day giveaway with a couple different sponsors for Christmas and we got over 900 leads. So use a contest if you're looking for uh, leads from Facebook, do a contest, promote it on Facebook and actually have an online sign up form. Uh, and you are going to be blown away by your results. So again, comments get seen, contest equals comments, it's community based and you can use live video to promote it and be authentic and it hits on all points. It's like a, a quadruple whammy. Is that right? Is that a phrase? I don't yeah. know, I'm making it up. That's, that's so good. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm coining the phrase, quadruple, quadruple whammy. All right, so let's go ahead and land this plane with a couple of examples. So first of all, you can see on the screen here, when I talk about authentic content, 
This was an example of some posts from Chanel. Um, these are from marketingexamples.com. Just cite my source here. I did not make these up. They came in a blog from them. Um, but on the left, this is old school marketing, right? So people would showcase the specific bottles. So it looks really high end, celebrate Mother's Day with a, a luxury gift. And on the right, you can see this is way more authentic, right? Some child's drawing outside the lines. <laughs> I don't know. Happy Mother's Day. But that post on the right got way more engagement than the post on the left. So think about that for your business. Is it a hand-drawn photo from your client or a handwritten note you want to take a photo and put online? Is it that that actual real raw photo of the house and not super polished, you know, whatever it is. Here's another one. Uh, Kim Kardashian West. Uh, it has a really blase, you know, uh, introducing the new la 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 from our new la 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 shop this time. Okay, that got 3.3 thousand loves. I mean, she's Kim Kardashian. Then you've got Rihanna down here, and she says, you know, I'm gonna try to humble myself about this, but it's coming now. You didn't hear from me, but you can shop early if you drop your email. 96.8 thousand okay so um i'm sure their following is about the same uh but the point is one feels canned like it's scheduled and the other feels real like she's tweeting it herself right uh here's another example so up top you know for this outdoors where uh company they used to have paid models you know wear their clothes right and take photos and put that on social now on the bottom these are real people who are wearing their clothes um, hiking up mountains throwing a child not recommended but that is a candid photo uh, and then actually fishing in their gear so the ones on the bottom that came from the clients themselves they posted out and that got more response here's another one so make a watercolor painting right so this is promoting a watercolor painting service from a gaming company uh, now, on the left, you can see it got 367 likes. On the right, the person who made it holding it in a frame with some trees behind her, you know, that's 70.7 thousand. So just think, you know, Instagram is really great. They want polished content, supposed to look super cool and all that. But Facebook, especially, people want this type of content. They want something that is real and authentic. Um, so I, I just want to say, you know, as we're coming to the end here, I hope you got so much out of this. I see everybody stayed with us till the end. My kooky antics and yelling didn't get you off the screen. I'm so glad you're here. I, again, I'm Crystal Lindsay. I'm the digital marketing consultant at the Victoria Advocate. Um, Kyle and I work in partnership to help businesses grow. I, and we just launched a $500 ads giveaway. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Okay. I know, I know, I know, it blows me away. So um, I'll make sure that you do get access to this. You can go to the victoriaadvocate.com, go to the con uh, entertainment tab with the contest drop down. you will see this, you can enter, um, but you do get $500 in digital ads. And that is where we give you some business consulting, graphic design, animated ads, analytics reporting, all of that through Victoria Advocate and M. Roberts Digital. Uh, so again, I am working for M. Roberts Digital, which is the digital marketing agency of the Victoria Advocate. So I work in partnership at the Victoria Advocate at their digital marketing agency. So with that, I thank y'all so much for being here. Um, stay tuned. February 25th at 11 a.m. is Facebook Marketing Hacks. Uh, so obviously today we laid the groundwork, but you're going to learn how to understand what drives your client. You're going to embrace your competition, how to create compelling call to actions that get people to take action, uh, learn how to have a social media role model, uh, learn a little bit more about why you have to pay to get seen. We're going to actually talk about boosting and some best practices and use emojis or puppies. You know, like I said, whenever you want to get seen, put puppies on the screen and that gets people engaged. So make sure you mark your calendar. Uh, the SBDC has partnered with the Victoria Advocate and Marvis Digital to bring this to you. Uh, so thank you so much for that, Miss Jean. You are uh, such a joy to work with. Thank you for having us and thank you all for, for attending. Yes, thank you all so much. Tune oh. in next time, February 25th. Yes, absolutely. And um, oh, uh, you are muted, Miss Jean.
And here's our contact information while we're waiting for it to come up. Uh, for some reason, we're not able to hear you right now, um, but I, I am very curious to see if we have any questions. Again, you can unmute yourself if you do have a question you want to join in. We would love to hear from you. Um, I have a question, and I think Jean was probably trying to um, unmute herself to ask my question. Fantastic. Let's hear it. My name is Jennifer and I'm asking from Quero. Um, my question was about what you had mentioned earlier that when you're linking to an article um, that Facebook mm -hmm. penalizes you for that. Mm -hmm. um, with what we're trying to do, the things that I do on Facebook for clients is I try to help drive uh, traffic to websites and we try to keep some of the posts short and then link to further content, you know, more information on the website. So Facebook then penalizes you for that. Could you explain more about that? Yeah, so I, I had to learn this the hard way. Um, Facebook does not release all their secret sauce, right? So let me start there. Um, you, if they told us exactly what they were measuring us based on, um, then we would know and, and they would fall apart like clout. I don't know if you remember the clout service, but they released their secret sauce of how you're measured to get a high clout score. That was clout with a K. And uh, they went under within like a year and a half because everybody picked them apart. So it is not common for um, social media services to give their algorithm and, and say explicitly what they are penalizing for. Uh, they do give best practices. But what I have found in my experience as a social media uh, firm and actually managing people's social media, consistently the lowest performing posts were the ones with the articles. Um, and I do not believe that that is because those were the clients were less interested in those articles. We actually made sure to select very good articles that were in line with the client's interests. Um, but consistently, they were being penalized and underperforming when we boosted uh, compared to a graphic, a video, uh, a GIF, something like that that kept them on the site. Um, so there are, you know, when you do research on the internet, there's a lot of other uh, people who are saying the same thing and that, you know, because it takes them off the site, it is being penalized by Facebook. Um, so that is something that I have learned from my best practice. Um, I would, what I would say to that though, is if you increase what we call your relevancy score, um, which is your um, stickiness factor, uh, which means, you know, when you post, people pay attention, people comment, people, you know, read your content, they stay on the platform because of what you say. If you increase your relevancy score um, overall, then you will get more seen for those links as well. So I would just say, make sure you're, you're using my video um, and other type of posts that you're boosting content. Um, you know, using stories, asking for comments, creating movement, using startling statistics, and then mixing up your links. Uh, but I would say as a person who's managed multiple campaigns, if you are using links, 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 and nothing in between, then it, it will be very hard to get the exposure that you're looking for. Okay. Okay. That's very interesting. I, I hadn't actually heard of that. So that will be useful for me. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you so much for turning on your microphone. It's so nice to, we feel like we're talking into the abyss here. So it's nice to hear your voice. Thank you. Yes, um, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Who, who else has a question? I know we still have some people on the line here. Uh, we are here to answer any questions that you may have. All right. Well, uh, with that, I, I thank y'all so much. I, it looks like Miss Jean is having a little bit of technical difficulty, um, but we thank her so much for ha hosting us today and partnering with us. Uh, all right, Leticia. Yes. Hello, Leticia. <laughs> Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. How can we help you? <laughs> I just want to fill in for Jean uh, with some last. Um, the last minute, a thank you. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for taking part in our Facebook 101. Uh, as you leave today, a pop-up window will appear with the link to the survey of today's webinar. Uh, you will receive an email with the survey link. The survey takes under two minutes to complete. 
Um, it helps improve what we provide. Again, thank you for joining us this morning uh, for this morning session. And as always, stay safe and have a great day. Thank you so much for that. Please fill out your survey. It means the world to us. Uh, that <laughs> truly is what makes this all happen and go around. So please, please, and thank you. Awesome. Well, with that, we'll be signing off and wish you a beautiful afternoon. Stay safe. Mark your calendar for February 25th at 11 a.m. See y'all then. Cheers. Till next time. See y'all later.